Welcome back to Human. Today's edition is going to be none other than how to lose fat. Now, before I start, it's very important that if you haven't seen our video on how to build muscle, which is gonna be linked somewhere on screen here, I strongly suggest you go and check that out because a lot of what we can do to lose fat starts with how much muscle we have and how we build muscle, so that is important as well. So when it comes to losing fat, we have got nutrition and we have got training. So those are two tools, but what I'm gonna talk about first is what I like to refer to as energy balance. So energy balance is simply energy in from the food and drink that we consume and energy out from the movement and exercise that we do. Now, the movement and exercise consists of training, but it also consists of something called NEAT non-exercise activity thermogenesis. Try and say that three times fast. So NEAT is essentially the calories that we burn by just being us. Fidgeting, standing up, sitting down, walking around, moving throughout the course of the day. And actually, that makes up a larger calorie burn than any workout that you will do, give or take. When we talk about nutrition, we're talking about the energy in, as I said. Now, if you have watched the muscle building video, you'll have heard me talk about three different areas of nutrition. One being a calorie deficit, the other being a calorie maintenance, and the other being a calorie surplus. A surplus of calories is above and beyond the calories it would require for you to stay the same. Calorie maintenance is the exact amount of calories in line with your exercise that allows your body to stay exactly the same. And a calorie deficit, you could probably guess, is a deficit of calories, and if we stay in a deficit of calories, our body will get smaller. But a calorie deficit is not the only way to create an energy deficit, because as I said before, we have to balance energy in versus energy out. If we are strictly looking at calorie deficits, I recommend finding out your true maintenance calories first. Now, most people have never gotten to that point because we are cons inconsistent with our eating habits. We're always up or down or up or down. So what I recommend is spending a period of time where you really focus in on eating consistently the same amount of food in line with the same amount of exercise and the same amount of steps. So we are creating a scenario where the same thing is happening day upon day upon day. And from that same scenario happening, you can then measure yourself at the beginning and measure yourself at the end to determine what that scenario was doing for your body. Because what you might find out is the amount of calories that you're eating in line with your exercise and your need, that may be a calorie surplus. So you may actually be eating too much and gaining weight. Then all you need to do is alter your calorie balance. But what you might find is when you become consistent with your calories, you do start to lose weight. And from that point, you already know what your calorie deficit is gonna be. So point number one, start consistently eating the same amount of calories, doing the same amount of exercise and the same amount of NEAT. That's your first point of call for fat loss. Second point of call is looking at the distribution of nutrients within your calorie deficit. I'm gonna keep it nice and simple and say that protein is the most important thing. So as long as you're eating an adequate protein intake, so for someone who's training one to three times a week, you're gonna look at 1.6 to 1.8 grams of protein per kilo of body weight. And someone that's going above and beyond training that way, you're gonna look at something slightly higher, probably 1.8 to two grams per kilogram. You have to be eating an adequate protein intake to maintain the muscle mass that's on your frame whilst you're in a calorie deficit. The third nutrition tip, is again carbohydrates. Now, carbohydrates are an energy source, but they're also what's called protein sparing. A common scenario is that someone will go into their workouts, high intensity or resistance training, they'll go into those workouts under fueled. So that means they've been in a calorie deficit, they've probably been eating low carb, and then they're still trying to do these high intensity workouts by which the fuel is carbohydrate. And when we run out of that fuel, our body doesn't just stop and say, oh, we can't do that anymore. It will still allow you to do what you want to do, but it has to recreate a different kind of fuel. And it will do that by breaking down protein. Now, what happens in that scenario is our muscle mass begins to get smaller and so does our metabolic rate and it gets harder for us to actually burn calories. 
So to recap that for fat loss, we're looking at three key points. The first one is we want to be consistent over three variables. How many calories we're eating, our exercise, and our step count. We want to measure ourselves at the beginning and after a couple of weeks of keeping those variables consistent to determine if what we're doing in that window is allowing us to lose weight, stay the same, or if we're gaining weight. Then we can start to alter our intake off the back of that. The second point within that is adequate protein intake. So we want to make sure we're eating at least 1.6 grams per kilo of body weight and upwards of two grams per kilo of body weight if we are a highly active individual. And the third key point is carbohydrate intake before our workouts because it's protein sparing. So we want to make sure we've got a little bit of readily available fuel, especially before resistance-based workouts and high intensity workouts to protect our muscle mass. When it comes to training for fat loss, I don't believe anything should be different to when you're training to build muscle. We still want to lift heavy, we still want to lift moderate weight slowly, and we still want to take some sets to failure. The only thing that will differ is that at times your energy levels will somewhat be compromised. So what we're actually trying to do from that stimulation when we're building muscle is we're trying to build and we're fueling for that. But when we're trying to lose body fat, we're using that stimulation to just retain as much muscle mass as we can. And the reason muscle mass is so important in a fat loss phase is because it contributes so highly to our daily calorie burn. So that means that the person with more muscle mass will burn more calories doing absolutely nothing than the identical person next to them who has less muscle mass. So it's in our benefit if we want to lose fat to have lean muscle mass. So in a training context, in one week or in one session, you want to make sure that you're progressively overloading and lifting heavy on one to two movements. You want to make sure that you're lifting moderately heavy weights relative to you for the rest of your movements and slowing them down. And then one to two times a week, we want to take one or two movements per muscle group to complete failure in a set. And all of those parts of hypertrophy or building muscle will allow us to retain lean muscle mass in a fat loss phase. Once we've ticked off our resistance training, that is going to be supportive of us retaining lean mass. But we also want to have extra energy expenditure throughout the week. Now, I would recommend you get this from low intensity exercise. And the easiest way to do that is to get outside and get walking. So the step count is your best friend when it comes to losing body fat through a fat loss phase. If you are not someone who is gonna get outside, maybe the weather's bad and you're a fair weather walker, you can use other low intensity tools like cycling, cross trainers, rowing machines, ski ergs. As long as you can do them at low intensity, there is not a risk of you breaking down and burning into muscle mass and there's less recovery time as well so you can do it every single day. We want to make sure that our energy expenditure is lifted so that we don't need to drop our calories down as much to create that energy deficit that I talked about at the start. That was my fat loss tips. So in recap, we've got eating, exercising and walking in a consistent fashion for a period of time and assessing what that does to your body. So you've got to be consistent with those variables. That's point number one. Point number two, you're going to eat an adequate protein intake. So we're going to aim for 1.6 to 1.8 grams per kilo, if not upwards to two grams per kilo if you're an active person. We're then going to make sure that before our resistance-based sessions and our high-intensity sessions, we're eating some carbohydrates as a readily available fuel source. Out with that, our training should look exactly the same as it does when we're trying to build muscle. We want to lift heavy, we want to lift moderately heavy weights a little bit slower, and we want to take some sets to complete failure. And on top of that, if we're trying to create a bigger energy deficit, we're going to use low intensity activity to do that. So that could be walking and getting a higher step count, or it could be using other forms of cardiovascular machines like bikes, cross trainers, treadmills, rowers, ski ergs, at low intensity to create enough energy expenditure, but not enough that we're gonna to have to recover from it and we're gonna be burnt out. They're my top tips for fat loss. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you like, share, and subscribe, and hit that bell. Come back in time for the next one.